Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're joined by Boyan Ivanov, the CEO of Storepool. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I know this is the first time we've spoken to one another. So before we kind of jump in and get into the uh, the thick of it, I guess, could you give viewers just a quick overview of the company? Sure. Uh, we were we are a European vendor uh, started in the very end of 2011. Uh, and we are uh, one of the few companies that are uh, uh, solid, fast-growing uh, companies in the storage domain that haven't, they're not uh, running by VC money. Uh, we're running uh, our business on four continents and over 30 countries, which is, I think, a unique twist to what we do. Uh, and we believe that data storage is the backbone of mod modern civilization. Like everything today is data-driven from, you know, they don't even crash uh, cars anymore. It's like all simulated by, you know, data models. Uh, and Strobo is the company that builds next generation storage technology that accelerates the world by storing it and processing it more productively. That's what we're all about. And as I mentioned, one of the few companies that are um, very unique in the sense of we're not at the mercy of financial markets. We're uh, just uh, looking at how to build the best technology and deliver it to happy customers across the world. Now, here we are, we're really just starting, you know, the new year. What are the biggest challenges that companies are going to be facing in 2023 with building their public or private cloud? Uh, I think it's all about doing more with less. We're in a very turbulent uh, environment from, uh, you know, economic downturns, staff layoffs, roaring inflation, international and geopolitical conflicts, climate change, change you, you name it. Um, in this environment, it's vital to have a technology that allows you to be swift, agile, and cost-effective. Uh, and for example, one trend that I see is repatriation from the public cloud for larger and mid-sized uh, enterprises. Uh, and that's a strategy that basically optimizes costs and uh, operations in general and allows companies to regain control over their IT and their uh, destiny, really. So uh, we'll see a lot of these things about uh, optimizing and doing more with less in 2023. You kind of talked about repatriation. Do you think more companies are going to be looking to build their own private clouds? And if so, why do you, why do you think that? Definitely. Uh, I'm a big believer in aligning your strategy to the master trends of the market. So if you think about it, uh, for the past 15 years or so, we basically had unlimited money supply at zero interest rates. And in this environment, success uh, is all about growth and capturing market share uh, at uh, almost any cost. And this is done by, in many cases, by you know, unprofitable unit economics and business models that, you know, don't really work well, uh, but focus on uh, how to grow the company fast and capture market share. Um, in the cycle we're in now, it's the flip side of that. It's about having a sustainable growth. It's about efficiency, operational expense, uh, excellence. It's about running private cloud. You know, it, it has its challenges, but if done right, it's a faster, better and cheaper alternative or a mix of, you know, public, private, uh, you know, a hybrid cloud, which gives you control, it improves data uh, sovereignty, you know, and it has its place in the mix. So I think these are drivers why I would see more uh, private clouds uh, going forward, uh, you know, with, as, uh, as the uh, master trend uh, turns. And if you could talk about the challenges that companies face with determining uh, the best technologies to use in their cloud. Oh, there are maybe a couple couple of things. One is most companies, they don't change their technology stack all that often. So they do it every three, five years. And basically they, you know, in many cases, they don't know what's out there, what would be best suited to their needs or to their type of company at their stage of development, which is different for an IPO company versus a company that's fast growing. So that's one. Um, then uh, you have... How do you select the best in cost technologies if you set on a technology stack, but that uh, landscape is changing very fast. For example, we've seen a number of acquisitions uh, of you know, major vendors and that creates uncertainty on the market. So then these are a couple of challenges, like what stack should I choose and what happens if my vendors are uh, under distress or they change strategy. And basically this all leads to, um, 
talking to the right partners that understand that. For example, with Storpool, we've built clouds for hundreds of companies. Uh, and we do it with different technology stacks. And we basically have a feel for, you know, if you're a certain company at a certain size and certain, uh, you know, growth trajectory, what might be a better fit technology-wise and what might be future proven uh, for the future. And if you're just a single customer doing that on your own, like the margin of error is very slim. And, you know, we talked about it at the beginning, the economy and the way that, that 2023's economy is shaping up uh, how much does the, you know, uh, cost drive uh, decision making more so than maybe getting this the right solution in place? Oh, that's a big one. Unfortunately, we, um, I see it more than, um, you know, than necessary, I would say. In many cases, cost is so uh, very uh, suddenly becomes the number one factor for, you know, waiting a decision in which way to go, which technology to acquire. And the story goes something like this. You have a, a project, let's say we're doing storage, let's, let's assume it's a storage pro project. In that storage project, um, technical people assess that they need a, a new storage solution. It should have some specific technical capabilities. And they go and ask for a budget, uh, either the CFO or somebody that's handling budget. Then they come back, the business organization comes back with, can you get somebody cheaper? And now, in many cases, I see a situation where they buy a cheaper vendor, which doesn't really deliver on their technical needs. So they're stuck with exhausted budget and a solution that just doesn't perform for them. So I would say be conscious about making a trade-off of a solution that's cheap but it's not going to get the job done because i see that uh, very often so that's one thing to be uh, very cautious about when when uh, building a solution and it's better to pay up a bit more but have a solution that's going to make the business excel rather than you know create more problems down the line after six months of you know battling with that project and based on what you've seen and your expertise, why do you think it's so critical to get the storage right from the beginning? Okay, that, that steps upon the, the previous question. But if you don't have a fast and agile storage, and we said storage like the new oil, the new, you know, everything's driven by data. It makes your staff, let's say you have a thousand people on board in your company, that makes, you know, a storage system is typically the thing that somewhere down in the infrastructure layer cre creates the latency and is a bottleneck for application performance. Application performance means that these thousand people are now, you know, twenty percent less efficient and effective than they can be. So basically, if you're buying storage once every five years and you get it wrong, that means that for the next five years, you're, you know, a thousand people be underperforming day in day out, and that's I, I think um, because it's such an impactful decision that's a bit obfuscated. People don't really realize that. You know, that's, I think, why it's critical to get storage right from the beginning. That's why it's critical to, to do a good, to have a good grasp of the technical needs and anticipated needs and have a platform that's really agile and flexible and can uh, provide uh, value depending on where the market goes or what the company strategy is and how it changes. So, it, you know, Talk to somebody that, you know, is dealing with that and is an expert and trusted advisor. You know, we're doing that for our customers. There are a number of other companies having this approach, more consultative approach. So I think, you know, this is, you know, doing a right RFI, RFP and, and you know, getting the project right and scope uh, done correctly. That, that would be critical for getting stor storage right from the beginning. And not to put you on the spot, but uh, can you tell us what's in store for Store Pool in 2023? What's next? Sure. Um, so we're ramping up our worldwide presence and our brand visibility because we've been around for quite a long time, but we, we're not as known as brand. We're like a, a specialist brand. And now we're ramping up, ram, ramping up brand visibility and also our uh, activities, especially in the U.S. Uh, so uh, our goal is to deliver the uh, very innovative cutting-edge technology that we've developed uh, to more users around the world and also to improve that uh, powerful data platform that we've built. So it's uh, actually even more useful to large scale IT users and operators and deliver va value to, to the world in that way. 
And as we wrap things up, where can folks go if they want to learn more about the company and some of the things that we talked about today? Oh, that would be our website would be the best place. It's like Stropo without the E, S-T-O-R-P-O-O-L dot com. Great. Well, you know, thanks again for joining VM Blog today. I know uh, it, it's been my pleasure to speak with you and hopefully uh, we'll talk again in further into uh, 2023. Thank you, too.